On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. Heath Oaks is a millennial mogul whose ignorance on fire led him to fail his way to success. Jenny Anchando is an Emmy award-winning journalist whose sharp eye and biting wit have led to her storied career in television. Together, they tackle today's headlines in a way only an odd couple with a dash of perfect opposite can. So kick back, relax, and join the conversation. This is Second Shot with your hosts, Heath and Jenny. So right in front of me is the monitor, and it shows like our logo staring at us, and it just is that reminder of just how much hotter my wife is than I am. Like, as I, as I stare at it, and I'm like... And my wife is hot, and I'm Thanks, like, babe. I definitely look like a mongrel from like the, from the, like land of lost time or no. something. <laughs> no, you don't. I actually love that picture of you on her yeah, logo. You're still much hotter. Thanks, it's good babe. though. That's no. my sales skills, baby. <laughs> we, Matt is still out. We got Jenny and Zach in as always. Hello, everybody. Matt's Hi. still acting like he's on vacation or something. He's doing something. Let me tell you, I'm I'm a little worried about what that guy's cooking <laughs> over there, but I'm sure it's fun. Whatever it is. You'd be good to know, Zach, that I did not start the clock. Um, <laughs> Glad to know. I know. I know. No, that thing is a menace. I'm telling you, it haunts my dreams. I wake up in a cold sweat thinking about not starting the clock. So last Thursday, Jenny's um, episode with Watch Chad Prather Show, and, and Monday, mine with the Chad Prather Show came out where he interviewed both of us on the show. And, of course, Chad took plenty of options and times to... Correct me on on my grammar, my my words oh, throughout good. that. One. It's funny. Good, I'm glad because I was I didn't hear uh, I wasn't there when when you recorded it. So I'm glad to hear that he took it upon himself to oh, fill yes. that role. Absolutely, yeah, he did really good with it in the beginning. This is whenever he both first taught me that Waller was not a word; it was actually Wallow, and I did not know that. I thought it was Waller. And it's just when instead of whenever. But that's just another. Yeah, that's a whole another up. lesson for another day. One day <laughs> mind blown. Waller. One day we'll get <laughs> Waller in the dictionary. It'll happen. All right. It should. Waddles. How should it be spelled? It's easy. Oh, tell me. Do tell. W a l l e r. Waller. <laughs> Waller. Put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need some Heathism shirts or something. That we would do. be funny. I need yeah. a conversation with your fourth grade English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> They gave up on me. <laughs> Look at you now, though, babe. It's, it's right. all good. Yeah. You sure showed them. Yeah. Well, our first article this week, uh, why are young people pretending to love work? This is a long one, so I'm going to try to sum it up best I can, but excuse the, uh, the language. Welcome to hustle culture. The current state of entrepreneurship is bigger than career. It's ambition, grit, and hustle. It's a live performance that lights up your creativity, a sweat session that sends your endorphins coursing. Uh, this is toil glamour. And it's going mainstream. The article goes to talk about people like Elon Musk, who have said, uh, tweeted, tweeted in November that there are easier places to work than Tesla, his company, but nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. The correct number of hours varies per person, but is about 80%, 80 hours sustained, peaking about 100 at times. Uh, pain level increases exponentially at 80. This, this goes on to talk about entrepreneurs, young folks who are just all about the hustle. Who like I my hobby is my work and work is my hobby it is my life I wake up in the morning I eat drink and sleep work it is my thing and the question this article asks is you know for some people surely this is real but a lot of people have to convince themselves this is something they like and like any any hobby it's niche it's its own thing and not everybody is gonna love work so are we getting to a point where it feels like people have to force themselves to do the rise and grind to 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 love work and that's who you have to be? And what does that mean, I guess? It's a, it's a, it's a wide sweeping article, but I'm curious to hear thoughts. I would almost think this is a probably a very cynical type person that wrote the article and imposing that question, it seems like to me. Because the truth is, a lot of people think that people that are just happy in general, they just are naturally wake up happy. And they like to think that and they want to be pissed off over there and not be a happy person. But understanding that people who are happy work to be happy. You mm -hmm. know, like, like you don't just um, wake up and, and, like, the people that are happy, we choose to be. We work on being happy because bad things happen to everybody. 
you that just sat over there in your poor, pitiful me and cry in your hands chair, um, you're not willing to do the work to choose to be happy. And I, so I feel like the person who did this article is like that person that's like miserable at what they do and is like, why are you forcing yourself to be happy? No, they're choosing to like love their job. I mean, that's really not a bad thing um, to, to make a choice to, to love it, you know, um, through it all, whatever it may be. I, I just think that the aspect of you do, I mean, mindset and happiness and, and, and anger and all those things are, are actually choices that you can and cannot make um, in, in, many diff- in many ways, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but in many ways you can choose to look at things in, in different lights. I know that that's really probably far off from what your take was. No, no. I think that's, I think that's an interesting take. I think I, I mean, I, I hear you on that. I, I guess when I, when I hear this, it just comes down to comparison when you get th- this becomes problematic this sort of hustle culture hashtag work 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 you know rise and grind all that kind of stuff is only problematic for the people who don't enjoy necessarily the rise and grind for people who are like uh no how about sleep in and have time with my family grind you know what i mean great (laughs) so so that's so i think they become problematic when the person who inherently enjoys more of a regular schedule looks at this and compares themselves and thinks that then there is something wrong with them for wanting work-life balance. Yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with either of them. The yep. big problem is when we look at what someone else has or is doing or is enjoying, or at least is posting on Instagram that they enjoy, yep. and think, oh gosh, oh, I guess I'm not grinding hard enough. No, own it. Do you. Yes. Be you. That is legit. That is fine. And, and that will, I think, bring that happiness. You know, choosing to be happy also involves realizing what does make you happy absolutely um yeah i'm, I'm not a, a huge fan of the you know hashtag hustle for, for all on and on and on and on and on because what we don't see um is the after effect of that type of lifestyle so yeah so the the example zach gave of tesla you know, so so we're saying, wow, you know what? That's true. They are changing the world. And so what? So how many hours was that? Oh, 80? Oh, 100? Okay, cool. Awesome. We're not seeing the full picture of that person's life. Perhaps that person is legitimately happy, you know, devoting everything to work, you know, working those holidays, but feeling like, you know what? That's okay because I'm getting the rewards of this and I'm changing the world. We don't see how that perhaps impacts their health, their sleep habits, their home life, their marriage, all these different things. And really, you know, it doesn't matter because again, if you do you, you don't have to worry about it. That's what you I'm can saying. still yes. be inspired by them. You can still be like, wow, that, that is, <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, I also think there is a season for the hustle and for ultimate health. This is a personal opinion. It needs to ebb and flow. You can't stay in that season for forever for, for the 80 hours, 100 hours a week. I don't think that that is sustainable long term for most people. But again, I'm not those people. Don't have to be. Yeah. And, and that is the best part is what you talk about is do you. Like, I mean, some people are wired in a way if they didn't have that massive why to – to be like changing the world with that thing, mm-hmm. like if that if they didn't have that, they would be an absolute miserable person, right? That's what it, you know, and, and that's what I think we've got to understand. And the other thing that I like is whenever this article points out and says specifically to saying young people these days, and it's always the the older generation saying young people these days. When you go back and look at it, the baby boomers are the exact same people the millennials are. The baby boomers changed everything in America. Baby boomers were the grinded out, working out, working nonstop, and and stay at that job. I mean, it was a different change they made, but they did. They were in the baby boomers era of coming up was one of the largest entrepreneurship booms there was mm-hmm. because most of them were. And what does they say about millennials, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I don't. That's what I love about it, though, is that how similar they are. And when you go back at how history repeats itself. Um, you know that how sim how similar they all are, but yet now they they think they're so far apart. Right. Yeah, I kind of I kind of see what you're saying. So th- so this article pointing out uh, people like saying that they they love their job, for example, and I think you're right, being maybe a little bit cynical about like, okay, do you really love your job? Here's the thing, too. I mean, work is work. Yes. Even you know, you, let's say um, what sounds like the easiest job. Being a model. Oh, you just stand there and look good. Absolutely not. not. You speak to a professional model. I have friends who have done this for a living and do do this for a living. There is 
prep time. There are restrictions on how you show up looking that day, what you're wearing, what kind of conditions you're in, whether you're, you know, staying underwater and it's cold or you're, you know, on the top of a mountain or you had to get up at two in the morning or fly it's across the country. It's not about the picture. It's about you all the stuff. You have the to other, eat you know, right. You have to do all exactly. those things properly. Even, you know, what I, I'm just throwing that out there as a job that people might think, oh, gosh, well, that's easy. She's yeah. just well, a shoot, model. I, I got a good one for you. Uh, Broadcast television. <laughs> well, you just show up and you talk for two yeah. hours on yeah. commercial breaks and then you go home and you're done. And it's yeah. super easy. That oh, would be my God. People used to always ask, well, so what do you do the rest of the day? Because they would see the, sh- you know, they would see the show, and so, and at the time, by the way, this was a, uh, a six-hour show. I was working on it, at Fox in Indianapolis. I'm like, well, well, first of all, we're on the air for six hours a day, so that's pretty full, and we do get in two hours prior to the show, read through the show, help write, research articles, find out facts after the show. There's a post-show meeting and prep for the next day. Well, that is more than a full day, but people because they saw, you know, a five-minute segment, they're like. Gosh, that's cool. So, that's easy. I want to do they, that. And they also think if the show starts at 4 a.m., they're like, wow, so you must wake up at like 3.45. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. no, because the studio's not at my house. So, yeah, so you've got to get up, prep, you know, drive over there, hair and makeup done, which you do yourself. Um, and then, of course, the actual content of the show, which is the important part. But, um, yes, that is a, a very good example. But I would still be the person who posts love my job because, by and large, yes, I do. And because I believe in sort of putting out what I want to be true. So so I'm not really big on, like, uh, for example, last week I did, I did make a post where I'd had my hair and makeup done and I was holding bright and I thought it was a really sweet picture, but I also gave some perspective on what had also happened that day, including um, Brighton having a massive accident all over the dress that I had just put on for the event I was hosting. Um, Charlie almost escaping out the front door. Breakfast being spilled everywhere and then me running late. So I I posted that little bit of perspective because I don't want to be the person who only posts perfection. Um, So I think there's a balance or I I try to find a balance at least with on my online social media posts, which is how a lot of people know me, um, in terms of being positive and saying things like, yeah, you know what, I do do love what I do. Um, But also being real realistic about hey look i'm just a mom who is like fumbling through life and trying to figure this out just like the rest of you but the key is is that it's it's also see it's unfortunate that you even have to show that perspective (laughs) because because you worry about others comparing to you so much and that's i think that's one of the biggest things that you said on this was just get do you like get out that comparing to what you've got to understand we're all so different people that what we we all have different thoughts, beliefs, and actions on what we believe is success and not, and all of that. And and if you get out of the comparing game, you're going to make things much easier for yourself, um, I believe. And then understanding that it's like just do you, like you said a hundred times, you know, do you, and, and and it'll all work out. We'll be back in a minute on the second segment of Second Shot. That was aggressive. <laughs> I was running out of breath. <laughs> He makes up words, she translates them. Heath and Jenny host more of Second Shot, coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code Second Shot. Now listen, promo code Second Shot, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal and go do it right now. Energyogre.com, promo code second shot in a free month. Thanks. Go get it now. Run. Ready? Aim. Fire. Second shot is back for another round on RNCN. Well, Jenny brought it up and... I guess that we um, slotted Zach because uh, you were wanting to ask him a question on the last one, and I wrapped it up before you asked that question. Oh, no, that's okay. I was just curious what your thoughts are yeah. on this topic, Zach, and the, you know, hashtag love my job, hashtag hustle, right. hashtag one million hour a week, um, work week. It, you know, it's it's a weird spot to be in because I, I do have a really cool job. I like my job a lot. Uh, I, I love this job. and And I... I don't know. I think everybody's different, right? You, you mentioned that, that, that everybody every, everybody likes their own thing. Uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, that I've been touting around an awful lot in the past six months since I heard it, because I think it's brilliant. Uh, Oscar Wilde said, be yourself. Everybody else is already taken. Mm-hmm. I and love that. I love Me it. Me too. I love it love so it, much. Love it. Like that, that, that quote directly influences 
um, a lot of how I live my life because you, it's it's it couldn't be more true. Like don't don't try to be something you're not. And I think when it comes to acting like you love your job and not actually loving it, you're being something you're not. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not like what you're doing. It's okay to be like, you know what? Maybe this isn't really for me. And it's okay to step back and go, you know, uh, maybe maybe I need to figure out something something new and something different. Or to say, you know what? This I think this might be it. This isn't what I wanted, but I found this job that I love and like I, I can't imagine doing anything else. That's all right. Um, I, I think ultimately all that matters at the end of the day is how we feel, right? Like all that all that matters when you get in bed is mm -hmm. did, did it feel good today? Did I feel bad today? Your personal perception of the world is your everything. It's what you see and what you do and what you take in. Not to get like <laughs> too far in the weeds here, but like no. I think it's okay to say I'm not happy at my job. I think it's okay to say I love my job. I think you can't get caught by the people who say they love it and you should love it too because they want you to have that happiness but they found theirs and maybe they don't know how to how you can find yours too and so they want you to feel the same way they do and and that's a well-intentioned thing but i'm getting way too far in the rabbit hole on this I no, no 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 you're <laughs> not just, well, it's just <laughs> bottom, it, it just basically is wrapping up really what we what we talked yeah. about on it which is it's do you like 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 the oscar wilde quote, quote you just said that is perfect i yeah. mean that's what it is it's not in that comparing game. Yeah, yeah, the comparison game is is detrimental to everybody. Right. We all we all stand to lose. Uh, and and, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not people saying, "Hey, you should love your job too, rise and grind," because they they want you to to be a worker bee and get back into the grind. Like, no, they want you to feel the same way they do. That's yeah. all. And and um, that's admirable, but it it can be not great, I guess. So um, I like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> this next headline, yes. I am curious. I, I'm hoping to get Heath's perspective so we can like hook everybody up with intel on how to have your boss love you. Yeah, uh, the importance of working for a boss who supports you. Employers seek loyalty and dedication from their employees, but sometimes fail to return their half of the equation, leaving workers feeling left behind and unsupported. Professional relationships are built on trust and commitment, and working for a boss that supports you is vital to professional and company success. Employees who believe their company cares for them perform better. Uh, this goes into investing in a relationship with your boss, ways you can communicate a little better, but I'm curious what you guys think about this, because I, I, I agree. I think I think that half of the equation can sometimes get left behind. Leadership is built on trust. If your your boss trusts you, that's great. But if you don't trust them, you're in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about this, Heath? I, well, I want I want Heath to give some tips for people who are hoping to endear themselves to the, their boss. I yeah, mean, not not kiss the ring, but yeah, I agree. Like, how do you how do you? I don't know. Like, okay. I, I, Give us some scenarios. I always try to, I think I'm an, uh, maybe could err on the side of being an over communicator. I don't know with certain things. And I always kind of wonder, okay, how much is too much? How much is they feel like you are sucking up or how, you know what I mean? Like, where's the fine line? I mean, I know what he's going to say. <laughs> Just do your job and I will like you. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, look, leadership is and, and self-development on leadership and all that is a massive industry majority of the books probably written are on leadership and and self-development right because and the reason why there's a big need is because there's a massive hole for great leaders and great bosses that actually support their people okay that's the that's the biggest reason why that that industry is so big there needs to be more leaders that, that can that can see that right to know that they support their people that then return support in them etc so I say that to know, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out really what somebody can do to support their, their boss as much because for me, um, I'm going to give support to my people no matter what. I mean, I, I, well, I can tell you this, when they, when, they, when they don't do what they say, when somebody shows me who they are, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to believe them after a, a couple of times and, and I'm going to back off on that support. Whenever you don't do what you say you're going to do, and you don't hold your word up to me, that's when you're, you're going to lose mine. Um, I'm, I'm not a very difficult. I just just don't lie to me and be honest and, and do what you say you're going to do. So when you think about your, you know, sort of, and you've said this on the show before, that you do pick favorites. Absolutely. And so when you think of your favorites, when you think of the people who you really enjoy and you would not want to lose, what are some of those qualities that they possess and what are they doing on a you know weekly or monthly basis that makes them so valuable and makes you want to support them? I can count on them. 
they do what they say they're going to do, and I can count on them. And in return, I feel like they believe they can count on me to support them and be there and whatever mm-hmm. they need. Honestly, I think the biggest is I can count on them to do what they say they're going to do. They don't try to come up with the fancy excuses of stuff to getting around it. They take self-responsibility. They have a self-awareness to know it's the conversation of I've dropped the ball and this is why I did it and this is what I figured out in my future. I'm not going to do that anymore. Before I even had to have a conversation about it. Mm. They just owned it. And they told me why, which which gives me a lot of... Um, I believe in them because I know they're they're self correcting, right? Like like it didn't like they already realized it and they told me how and why. It wasn't just like my bad, I won't do it again. It was like, here's what I did, here's how it won't happen, here's what I'm doing to correct that one. And I never even had to say anything. But I, I honestly to me is it's that when I can count I just need to be able to count on you. I need to be able to if you say we're going to um, do X, Y, Z, like just do it. Mm-hmm. It's, so, it's so simple, yet people are looking for a more grand answer because yeah. people don't want to do what they say they're going to do. Well, um, but it's it's similar. I mean, what, what I'm hearing you say is that the boss-employee relationship is the same as all relationships. That does not differ from a colleague relationship, from a you know familial relationship. It's all the same. Well, that's the thing is your, your boss is going to support you more and more the more that you come through when you say you're going to come through and and maybe you come through and come out of it whenever it comes you know another thing is for me is when people are um you know have ideas and have things are coming up with that means they're in the business like when i have people that are just like um following whatever it is said and done and like are never coming to the table with things um then they don't like you mean with questions or, or concerns ideas or, or ideas or okay. anything like that right like that means they're in it. When you, when you've got your when your mind's going, I I, I know you're in the game, right? Mm-hmm. That that means your your head's in it. And you're thinking about um, what can be done to be better. So I don't. I, and so I like even though they could be harebrained ideas, or whatever. But you know what? It just shows to me that you're 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 trying to find solutions to problems we have. They could be the wrong solutions <laughs> in my mind, mm-hmm. but I, at least I know you're 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 coming with something. Um, but on, I mean, I'm telling you the most simplest thing in simplest form for me is just doing what you say you're going to do. And, and, and it's funny because that's why I talk about this. My second shot on it is just in a relationship, you know, with your spouse or, or somebody, um, being with the, the, the importance of being with a spouse that supports you, you know, um, and how important that is in, in today's world as well. But, um, in, in the boss world, I, I mean, it's. Um, I believe that once a boss can trust you and count on you, that you're going to get a lot. You, you'll get a lot of support from them. Mm-hmm. And and do you mind when people ask for it? When people say, "Hey, look, I could really use some help here." Is that like, oh gosh, or are you thinking, "Oh wow, you're in the business. You're you're working, so you you're realize in the business." You need okay. I always know whenever we start new offices and stuff, the ones that wear me out and call me all the time with stuff are the ones that I know are killing it and going to do great. And they, I love it. Like, it's not wearing me out because I know they're in the business. The ones that won't because they either have an insecurity of looking like it's wrong or, you mm-hmm. know, asking the questions, those are the people that, that beat their head on the wall and never get there because they're too scared to just ask for, you know, the help. Mm-hmm. I think that's a really good message. Um, my personality is inclined to really question whether to go to the boss for help because I don't want to seem like a pest or I don't want to seem like somebody who couldn't figure it out on my own. So I think that's good messaging for people with my type of personality to go ahead and ask. And if, you know, if they can help, they will. Well, and I've had my conversations with them, too. And I've said, look, before we've gotten started, I need you to wear me out. If you're wearing me out every day, come to me with anything there is. And, and every time they do, I, I always do everything I can to help them, but then I've got some that just won't do it. Mm-hmm. They won't do it like they're they're too worried about whatever it is, but then, they, then they're stuck in the same spot year after year and not making moves because they're too insecure to um, to come and ask um, for help in any ways. And, and they won't listen. They keep trying it their own way versus the other. And then I have my offices that I know are going to kill it because, like I always tell them, I say, look, you know, I, I've got 12 years in this business. So if you're starting out and you're doing, you're really working hard at it and you don't have one million questions that you don't know the answer to, that means you're not working. You're not uncovering enough things because Mm -hmm. I still have a lot of questions every day and I'm 12 years in. So you being brand new at this, 
you better have a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I like this this idea that, that it is a relationship. I think people forget that. They think it's professional, and they're like, well, they, they're they my boss, and I'm, I'm their employee, and that's just the way it is. We didn't set this up. This is just how it has to be. I think it's important to understand that, like, it's more than that. Like, it just is. There has to be a level of engagement. You have to be able to listen to each other and hear what each other has to say and help each other out. Um, in both cases, right? Boss tells you to do something, you have to be able to help them and do it. Uh, you ask the boss for help, they have to be able to listen to you and, and help you out in some form or fashion. Um, I think a lot of people discount that and just, well, they tell me to do it and I do it and that's the way it is and you end up just feeling like you're never heard and and you're miserable. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The biggest way I've been able to find support from my bosses, and I'm talking upper, upper, upper level management. So for example, at a TV station, there is one general manager. These are the people where employees will often say, you know what? Yeah, the GM is just so uninvolved. You know what? They, they never come into the newsroom. They're very uninvolved. And um, at my very first TV station, I became very closely connected with our general manager. And I remember people saying, oh, they're so uninvolved. Well, they weren't for me because guess what? I went out and said, hey, you made an effort. Can you take a look at this story? And um, and on multiple occasions, he said, Jenny, this is terrible. I can't believe we actually aired this. But guess what? He gave me advice. And then he had it was a it was a team effort for the next stories that we put on the air. So then I have someone who's got you know 30 years in the business helping out me who had six months in the business and guess who got a great job after that job because of his support and because he saw, like I think it, it invigorated him too because he's sort of working on the business side and working on finance and working on, you know, out, he's outside of the creative part of the business that his yeah. employees are in. And so I think that it helped him to kind of get get reinvested in the product and to be able to mentor somebody in that way so it wasn't like i got him for an hour a day it was you know 10 minutes here every once in a while but i really valued what he said and we still keep in touch to this day because i was somebody who you know was bold enough to reach out and sort of ask for help and sometimes it was hard to hear but we that created a bond and I think that whenever you think about it in your personal relationships and, and the work stuff, when it comes to it is the, you know, when, when you become somebody that people can count on, when you are somebody that um, others go, no matter what happens, that person does what they say they're going to do. Whenever you are that person that, that reaches out for communication to get clarity with all of it in personal relationships and business, those are ways that people will start to support you more in general. So. Maybe you should work on your communication, working on um, doing, following through when you say you're going to and doing all those things and putting those regimens in place so you become one of those people. We'll be back on the third segment of Second Shot right after this. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Heath and Jenny still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people, and I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Go pick it up today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. Well, we've got a huge announcement that Jenny's going to go over here in a little bit. I want to address some stuff with uh, uh, Zach first, and then we're going to let Jenny <laughs> uh, drop the ball on some stuff. But now, here's the thing. Leave us a rating and review. Second Shot Facebook group. We're all hanging out there chilling, chillaxing, yeah. Cadillacing. <laughs> I mean, you're Cadillacing. Yeah. And um, and then we need a rating review. We need some shares, guys. You, that has help to us ha- out. So here's the deal. If you leave a rating or a review or share a screenshot or a link of the podcast on any of your social media, tag me on Instagram and I will share it to my audience of... I have a large audience on there. So if you're looking for followers for your business, your company, just even your family page, um, I will, yeah, share it. Tag me at Jenny and Chondo on Instagram and I will share that in my Instagram stories. And um, the way to do the review, by the way, is through your podcast app. And it's super simple. It takes 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's almost easier than subscribing. I was at a meeting not that long ago with a bunch of, of local um, social media influencers for whatever oh, way that has. that's cool. Man, uh, any of them would have thought, would have taken you up on that offer. Like, Jenny Achando is going to retweet my thing? Like, that's huge. Yeah. You know? like, yeah, that's 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 a big deal. And, and I feel like a lot of people discount that. Seriously. Go share. that tag in. Yeah. It's pretty simple. You will be shocked. It'll work out. Secondshotcast yeah. at gmail.com is also the, the email that if you have any questions, comments, or anything you want to send, um, you know, with a lot of people now are just posting in the Second Shot Facebook group some of their stuff that we used to kind of get similarities mm-hmm. in, in emails. Um, and so in the third segment, we usually kind of take this time as a free-for-all and to, to address some of those. And so today um, we're going to have uh, – I, I want Zach to bring up what he just talked about, and then we're going to turn to Jenny for her to drop her new little uh, – adventure on everybody i know i feel like i'm stepping on the news no don't no no no. i want to have that discussion because when we have these good discussions off the air it's important to bring them to everybody else too. so i had a a, a friend of mine reach out they, they just got a new job uh and they're very excited they're, they're they're doing their thing and 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 they told me that they spied on their 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 manager's uh phone <laughs> not to eavesdrop or anything but i mean this is just something you see uh, on their iphone they noticed that red bubble above their like mail notification had like Seven, oh, just a lot of unread emails, like thousands. They said like seven thousand or something. Uh, it's absurd. And, and and to me, I'm the kind of person. I'm not. I'm not a leadership. I'm not. I'm not a leader. I'm not in leadership here. But I'm the kind of person that like I'm so meticulous about emails. Even if it's spam, I delete it, unsubscribe, whatever. Because that is like my that is my channel through which I am able to send and receive work, and like that's important to me. And it just it just it was weird hearing that like oh you have a manager who has a stupid amount of unread emails that they're just not not on top of not keeping track of and who knows maybe a lot of those come from a personal account a previous job I have no idea but that that's something that just stuck stuck in my craw a little bit that 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 you you're you're in leadership and you're not keeping up with that stuff because the devil is in the details and those are the details that you're ignoring at least it seems to me whatever that is whatever whatever's going on there and i can they can have a side business for all i know i could be totally wrong but um that bugged me so i wanted to ask i wanted to submit to the court for approval uh a a a, a right a, a manager or a leader who just does not just has a misses that who okay. sees who sees that big red notification and ignores it every time they open their phone like ah, i'll deal with that later I that, see what you're that saying. That seems weird to me. What do you think? Well, it's probably a spam account. Probably. I, I, I would like to hope that any good leader is definitely responding to people because uh, when you don't respond to people or ignore their request, you're just sending a message of I'm more important than you. And I, that's just not going to be a good way to get, you know work out of your people <laughs> that's just that's just not going to work out well and you're just going to get a really bad reputation i would like to hope that that is a spam account um i have this is going to make people who you know are like ocd really upset i have 165 unread but those are for my gen 42 uh hotmail account yeah so they're like you know ads and things like that but what do you think heath I it would drive me nuts if I had to see 140 something red little dots above my mail. <laughs> um, I'm a guy who gets the respond back. I, I um, there, there are it would drive. Me, I mean, I, I don't think you have to respond as a leader. You have to respond. So like, um, if you're not responding and addressing things, you're gonna lose a lot of respect really quick. Now, under, I understand this is. Email should not be something that people should expect an immediate reply on. That, that's where I think the culture has gone bad is. Email is not an immediate reply communication. That, you know, and that's where a lot of people can't get disconnected from the email and they're like going to check everything real quick. I think in 24, 48 hour reply from an email is fine. So you need to maybe, some people are overdoing the email on how much on it? That's not a direct communication. It was never set up to be a direct communication, fast type of uh, of setup. So, um, the expectation of an immediate type of reply is something that needs to um, be changed because that's not what it's for. I mean, if you if there's you're making a, the suggestion of a phone call, a phone call, if you a need text message, response. something quick like that. If you need some, an email should be something that um, a 24, 48 hour reply is respectable. Um, you definitely shouldn't have that many built up with no reply with it at all. It drives me nuts when people don't respond to people at all. Like it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, I very, I, I really try to very, very rarely drop the ball in that area. I mean, obviously we're all human, but mm-hmm. we do. But, but I, I would say I, I definitely 
don't drop the ball in that area uh, more often than not. I mean, just in my opinion. Yeah, I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt and say that that's some sort of junk spam email folder. And my hopefully OCD, they though, are... I would have already gotten rid of those junk spam or <laughs> yeah. something. There's no yeah. way I could look at that red bubble what like about, that. Does this bug you or trigger you, babe? Looking. Yeah, at God bless. Mine. That would just drive me nuts. This, I couldn't do this it. This no. whole phone <laughs> situation. I don't Show know. the camera. Show your camera. You a lot going on here. What's, what's, what is this? I mean, okay, you got some red bubbles on is there. Is that stressing you that guys stresses out? That stresses me. Oh, a bunch of phone calls? I, I can't. Also, okay, yeah. I, I also don't have it. any of my apps updated, so those are, yeah. you I can't know. stand that. 132. Well, but, okay. Okay, I have a weird thing with saving voicemails, too. Like, just people who are special in my life. Although, Heath never leaves me a voicemail, so I don't think I have one of him. But, um, like, Surely my mom, my one. dad, both my brothers, people who I don't see very often, I do right. save like their voicemails you, because I think I think you do the same thing I do probably most of us do like God forbid tragic yeah. strikes anything happens and yeah, to them I didn't want to say it that. but yeah like, yeah totally yeah yep. yeah so babe you should leave me a voicemail so I can save it I'll do I it. even have one from your mom okay I'll leave yeah. you one okay that be beautiful okay I'm I'm like, like, you, you'll work so, up a whole message and she'll pick up I'll, yeah, <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know he never calls me I probably would pick up even if right. I was it was like an emergency because he never calls or we do not not I'm not that's like not a judgment on Heath we just don't call each other often hey, text and stuff yeah yeah I want you to tell us what's going on in your world you guys I am so excited on my vision board for 2019 I put a lot of different things that I wanted to happen and want to come into my life and you know without a plan I it, we talked about the the difference between vision boards and actual plans and setting goals and things like that so the vision board is just sort of more of an abstract concept and one of the things I put out there was future of fitness and I also put fitness innovation on it and I have been a certified personal trainer for 15 years I don't actively train but I'm still just I have a passion for fitness and and always have and always will so about, oh my gosh, with three weeks ago, a no, month ago, longer than, okay. that. longer than that. Okay. So let's say a month ago, um, the functional medicine doctor I was seeing, it told me I had taken these blood tests. I had heavy metals in my system. I had mold toxicity. I had all sorts of issues and there's a number of different remedies. One of the suggestions was to go to an infrared sauna. So I was like, okay, cool. So I start looking up infrared saunas. They're like $25 a pop. And so then I'm going to have to work out, then go to the infrared sauna. I'm like, oh, I don't have time for that. Then I found out about a place called Hotworks, H-O-T-W-O-R-X, where you do a workout inside of an infrared sauna. So to me, I thought this is maximum efficiency. So I'm getting the benefits of the infrared sauna, but then I'm also getting my workout. So I'm not having to do one than the other. Um, went to it, fell in love with it. Uh, couple weeks later went and met the creators of the program um and now i am going to be opening a hot works facility in the dfw area Whoa, boom, boom, boom. really yes oh man yes it's going down i will be hiring really <laughs> yes i'll oh, be man. i'll be I'll hiring within the next i can't um, wait she's about to be hiring people and dealing with some employees it's gonna seriously? be awesome <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh i'm so excited yes. congrats thank you so much That's i'm really so cool. excited because i'm this is just something i'm passionate you know fitness is something i'm very passionate about so i'm not stopping broadcasting or do you know all, all of those other things that still you know going to be a big well, part of my and life. And that's the reason why she's buying a franchise and buying a location of a franchise is that it's something that once we get it, once she gets up and going like and has it set, she can still keep doing her broadcasting mm -hmm. career while having that kind of on the side. Oh man, I want to hear about uh, leadership problems. I oh my gosh. Ask you about things. Well, it'll probably give me some fodder for the show. I'm yeah. sure I'll be able to bring a different uh, depth of knowledge. It it's going to be interesting. Heath is like waiting for me to struggle. <laughs> but I'm not going to struggle. I'm going to kill it. I'm not waiting yeah. for I'm not I don't think you're going to struggle. No. I'm just waiting for the I'm waiting for the um uh, for those dynamics to hit that you haven't yet dealt with. <laughs> oh, so yeah. That's what I'm waiting it's for. It's another level. I'm really, really excited about it. And I'm, I'm excited to learn about, you know, opening a business. I mean, already so far, we've been looking at different sites. So we don't know our exact location in the Metroplex right now, but we've been uh, looking at different sites and kind of working on that. And I've been learning about just setting up, just doing all the things to set up a business. So this is a new venture for me. I, I had a small personal training business that was just literally me back in the day. So I, I did this on a very, very small level. So this will be um, another level. I mean, and I, I'm excited about it because, I mean, she's going to kill it. I mean, she's going to slay this thing. She's, Thanks, babe. Uh, I love because she, she'll just – she'll outwork anybody there is. Um, the woman's like the Energizer Bunny, and it just goes and goes. I don't know how it always works, but she does. <laughs> and I'm excited because it's going to be a fun – 
like um it's like she gets to do that while keeping her broadcasting when you've always had a dream and, and it's mm-hmm. always been a dream to own a fitness business yep. and that's the cool thing is that that dream is coming true and that reality is coming to fruition which is fun yes gosh it, last year was kind of a hard year and so i needed um i felt like i could use a win in terms of my long-term goals and i'm really thankful that this came about I've looked into several other fitness related businesses because this is something I've wanted to do for so many years and none of them really made sense for for me. And also, I mean, you have to believe in something wholeheartedly. Yes. I, I and think. you do. But you took this one. As soon as you did it, you loved it so much mm-hmm. and you thought it was such a, I mean, it was like in 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 a m- Three weeks later, it's like okay, we're we're buying. It's like <laughs> yeah. that's how hardcore she was about it. Yeah, it. and and I'm actually a slow mover, so you know that I really believe in it. If I it's move only been open like a year and a half, and you can look at Hot Works and see if there's one local around you. And, yeah. and if you're in the H-O-T-W-O-R-X. Dallas area, W O R X. If you're in the Dallas area, don't go do any of them until we get ours open. No, and then you come stop join it. Ours. You can do any of them. <laughs> there are, there are several in the there are more in the Metroplex than anywhere else. So if you happen to live in the Metroplex, go check it out. Your Indy's got them too. Yep, Indianapolis. In fact, I it was so funny because I called the owner of the one in Fishers, Indiana, and I know we have some listeners from Fishers and from Indianapolis, and I introduced myself, and he was like, "Wait a minute, did you used to work at Fox Fifty Nine? Because I was calling him to find out about Hot Works to find out." you know, what are the challenges? Would you, you know, do, do you b- still believe in the business now that you own one? All that kind of stuff. And and he did. He said he loved it. And he was like, oh, that's crazy. So. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Oh, you you got to work out like Budget and employees oh, and I retail space. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> Inventory. Excited. No, it'll be good. Yes, it'll be great. I can't yes, wait yes. to grill you on all things. I see. I'm looking forward to. It's like being the cool uncle. I get to stand on the sidelines and watch your struggle. <laughs> yeah, and right. like Point and laugh and like cry and like yeah. enjoy it together, right? Like from afar oh. with no commitment on my end. It'll be so cool. I That's can't so wait. Great. We, there is a commitment on your end to come to our grand opening and sweat it out when we very first. Oh open. my God! Yes, please. Earn okay, the yes. burn, Let's. baby. Yes. Yeah, I Earn love the it. burn. So what's gonna be funny what i think what we're gonna have to do is uh, the third segment we're gonna have to have a like have make up like a funny little like jenny update on a hot work so <laughs> you going, you, yeah you like going through this journey i think would be cool right oh. like in and and admitting and go through some of the things you're learning with it all i think would be actually pretty cool for yeah. people to get that insight on so maybe we'll start doing we'll that on third segments yeah. giving everybody some insight <laughs> on it all i love it um so where can they find you at? so instagram at Jenny Ann Chondo. Same thing with Facebook, Jenny Ann Chondo TV on Twitter, and my website, Jenny Ann Chondo.com. Uh, Facebook.com slash group slash second shot, uh, second shot cast at gmail.com. Tell us what you thought of the show, get involved with it, come join the conversation. And Apple Zacintosh on Twitter and Instagram. Who needs it? At Heath Oaks and at Ignorance on Fire on all those platforms. Share us with your friends and family. Share it on Facebook, social media, and all those good things. And we love you until next time on Second Shot.